Lights and Wax program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Carnew, and Johnson's self-polishing glow coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> Notice it, the month of September is almost gone. In lots of homes, heating plants have already been in operation. In many others, they soon will be. What happens when the heat comes on? Well, for one thing, there's less moisture in the air, and everything tends to dry out. Also, there's apt to be more dirt in the house. And those are two important reasons why good housekeepers make sure every fall that their floors, furniture, woodwork, and leather goods are all protected with a coat of Johnson's Wax. The wax helps to keep wood and leather surfaces from drying out. In this way, it acts as a preservative, a protection for so many things around the house. Your floors, your tabletops, windowsills, Venetian blinds, and your luggage and other leather articles. It makes your daily and weekly house cleaning so much easier because dirt just doesn't cling readily to a Johnson wax surface. Today, it pays to protect your things with genuine Johnson's wax. Entirely aside from the fact that a regular use of this wax polish adds great beauty to every room in your home. Here they are again at 79 Wistful Vista, Fibber McGee and Molly. Heavenly days, McGee. Sit down and relax. Oh, okay. Stop your pacing. If you can't consider my nerves, think of the shoe coupon. Well, uh, I, I can't help it, Molly. I'm just full of spent-up energy. <laughs> I'm restless as a kitten. Well, how a man who gets as much rest as you do can be restless is beyond me, dear. What do you want to do? I don't know. I just want to... <laughs> what was that? What was what? Listen. <laughs> oh, that's that great Dane that belongs to the people next door. Great Dane? Sounded like a horse to me. I know. They've been feeding him so much horse meat he when he's at the moon. <laughs> Did you know they've taken in a rumor next door? Yes, I've seen her going in and out. Hmm? Very attractive girl, too. What does she do? She's a procrastinator at a burlesque show downtown. A hmm? procrastinator? Yeah, yeah. She puts things off. <laughs> hey, I wonder if there's any of the gang down at the club. I could lick my weight in cribbage players tonight. McGee? Huh? We have an extra room. Good for us. I guess I'll call the club and see who's hanging around. Maybe we could rent it to some war worker or somebody. You know, rooms are awful scarce in town now. And on the other hand, if I could just find one pigeon to play gin rummy with, I'd... Rent what? The back room. Wouldn't be any trouble and might bring in eight or ten dollars a week. We can't rent that back room. I got my moose head in there. <laughs> Put the moose head in Uncle Dennis's room. He won't mind. <laughs> Why should he? He's even glassier eyed than the moose. Now, you stop picking on Uncle Dennis. He only uses it for medicinal purposes. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I saw him sitting in a medicine cabinet on Oak Street last night. <laughs> that guy in the white coat must have been the intern. <laughs> give me the phone, Molly. I'm going to call the club. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the Elf Club at 790. Oh, 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 is that you, Mert? Oh. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? Here's eh? What day, Mert? You did. Had a nice saddle of mutton and somebody swiped it. Well, I should think you would be, Mert. Would be what, dearie? Saddle sore. <laughs> what say, Mert? They don't? Mm-hmm. No, they didn't hear either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, probably got a big game going on down at the club and took the receiver off the hook. Well, thanks anyway, Mert. No answer. You know, if there was somebody in that back room, there'd always be somebody here if we wanted to go out at night. Go out where? Oh, to a dinner or movie or something. Oh, let's go to the movies. 
All right. Say, why don't we stay here and listen to the radio? Bob Hope is on tonight, you know. Oh, I think that guy's a phony. What? You can't tell me he makes that stuff up as he goes along. <laughs> Say, did you hear him last week kidding Mrs. Roosevelt about traveling so much? Yeah. He was just sore because he had to come home before she did. <laughs> Boy, did you see that pan of his on the cover of Time magazine? No, was it good? Good. Did you ever see a relief map of the High Sierras? <laughs> I'll pack a necktie under it and you got hope. <laughs> I always thought he was a young guy. Oh, no, I don't think so. I read someplace about a golf match he played and it said he was in the 70s. No. <laughs> it's pretty gutsy of an old guy like that to go booming around in a bomber. <laughs> What movie do you want to see? You select one. Okay, let's go to the palace. What do they got? They got the best candy of any theater lobby in town. <laughs> let's go. What do you say? All right, dearie. I'll powder my nose and get my purse. I'll be with you in just a minute. Ah, there goes a good kid. Best wife a man ever had. What was that? Oh, nothing. Yes, sir. If I had it all to do over, I'd marry her again as quick. Even if her old man still thought I was a no-good bum. She's the one that's always... Oh, dear. Hope that ain't Doc Gamble. He's a bigger bore than the Big Inch Pipeline. <laughs> Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hi, sis. <laughs> well, whatever your business is, if any, make it snappy if possible, because we're going to the movies if it ain't too crowded. Oh, why don't you go up to the Orpheum, mister? Why? They got Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Oh. Boy, is that a dilly. Hmm. Willie Toop sat behind me and couldn't even see the picture on him. Kind of my hair was standing on him all the time, I bet you. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm too sophisticated for that stuff, sis. I go for the polite drawing room comedy type of stuff like that there, Pastel. Oh, yeah? Don't give me that, mister. Last Saturday, I saw you sit through a hop along Cassidy Weston three times. And when you came out, you were walking bow-legged. <laughs> well, that wasn't from watching the picture. I stopped in on my way home from the grocery and was sitting there with a sack of potatoes between my knees. <laughs> Now, look, sis, we got to be going, so if you don't mind, I will... See, you know, I go to the movies all the time, mister. You do? I was the one that's asked. Mm -hmm. They had Frankie Sinatra in person. Hmm. <laughs> Thrilled you right down to your bobby socks, eh? Oh, brother. I guess I'm just a slick chick, mister. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you are, but you can't roost here. We're going out. Okay, I'll go. My uncle's home anyway, and I want to see him. You know, he's a stomach gunner in a flying fortress. You don't mean a stomach gunner, sis. The correct term is... Please, now, mister. There's a lady present. Okay, lady. Now, now, scram, will you? Sure. My uncle's more fun to talk to anyway. Oh. And boy, do those aviators eat. You know, he had seven scrambled eggs for breakfast. Wow. How does your mother feel about that? Oh, she don't care. Mm -hmm. She says that's why. Mm -hmm. Out of the frying pan into the flyer, she says. <laughs> so long, mister.
sis. Give me two tickets to the main floor. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, how much is the main floor? Sixty-five cents, sir. How much are the loges? Loges are eighty-five cents, sir. What? Eighty-five cents for loge seats? Are they studded with diamonds or something? The loge seats are upholstered, sir. So what? So am I, but I don't make myself eighty-five cents every time I sit down. <laughs> Now, McGee, stop arguing and buy a couple of tickets. You're holding up the line. Now, don't hurry me, Molly. I'm fighting for a principal here. Now, look, sis, you know and I know that 85 cents for load seats is ridiculous. It's inflationary. Let's see your ceiling prices. There are no seats on the ceiling, sir. <laughs> the second balcony is as close as you can get. Oh, a smarty skirt, eh? Well, how much are balcony seats? Fifty cents, sir. Fifty cents for balcony seats? Why, how you can see better from up there than you can from the main floor. And you charge less. Now, that don't make sense, sis. Oh, now, look at me. Oh, 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 dear, oh, heavenly days, McGee, you're keeping 40 people waiting. So what? I'm fighting for them as much as I am for myself. Hey, I know one of the stagehands here. Let's go see the picture from backstage. <laughs> don't be silly. We wouldn't understand a word from behind the screen. Why, the sound would be backwards. Huh? <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, all right, all right. Quit pushing back there. Now, take it easy. The theater ain't going anywhere. Give me two main floor seats, sis. I have some money if you're short, McGee. Thanks, I got the exact change. Here, sis, $1.31. Well, that's one cent too much, sir. Yeah, I know. I'm giving you a penny for your thoughts. <laughs> and that's the biggest profit you'll ever make. Come on, Mrs. McGee. I don't think you're very nice to that girl, McGee. She didn't do anything. Well, gee whiz. I never like to buy anything unless I dick her a while. <laughs> Argon is one of the few luxuries you can buy these days. You lead the way, dearie. My eyes are no good in the dark. Okay. Hang on to my coat. Oh, dear. It's as gloomy as a broadcast from Berlin. <laughs> Here's two seats, Molly. Right in there. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, sis. <laughs> Come on, Molly. Maybe farther down. In here, McGee. That's it. Uh, huh. Nice timing. The feature's just over. I hope there's a newsreel tonight. Yeah? I always like to see the new battleship sliding down into the water. <laughs> <laughs> always reminds me of my fat Uncle Herman getting into the bathtub. <laughs> he was one of those guys that... Quiet, dear. You're disturbing people. Oh, I'll let him go. I'll be right back. Hold the seat for me. All right, but hurry now. Hey, hey, Usher, where's the candy display? Uh, never mind. Oh, I see it. Well, hello, hello pal. Wilcox. Well, well. As the fellow says to the racing board when they gave him another A card, long time no see. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fibber, where's Molly? Inside. I just come out to get a hunk of candy. What are you doing loafing around this theater lobby? I'm waiting to talk to the manager. You know Sigmund Wellington? Tiggy? Oh, sure. He's secretary of the Chamber of Commerce. Kind of a dope. <laughs> well, I don't agree with you, as usual. Huh? I think Wellington's a pretty bright guy. Been around, too. Managed theaters all over the state of Texas. Yeah, well, that's what he says. Who will get to ten that he thinks the panhandle is a facial massage? <laughs> what you want to see him about, anyway? Well, it's confidential. Oh, come on, you can tell me. You know how I am, Junior. Telling me a secret is just like whispering it to your little pillow on your little trundle bed. I know. There'll always be a slip on it. <laughs> oh, come on. What you want to see Wellington about? You won't say anything? Cross my heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look, it's about the other theaters in town. Yeah? Yeah. They can't understand how he manages to keep all his woodwork and these paneled walls and the doors and everything so gleaming and shiny. When help is so hard to get, they think he's holding out on them. Well, what's the secret, Junior? Well... There really isn't any secret, pal. Yeah. Anybody can buy Johnson's wax. And there's nothing like it to protect and beautify all wood and enamel surfaces. Yeah. And particularly in a theater with thousands of people passing through every day, smudging everything with fingerprints. Oh. Why, Johnson's wax is the answer to a theater manager's prayers. Oh. You're not just saying that to try and sell more Johnson's wax. Wellington is the only married theater manager in town. Oh. His wife told him all about Johnson's and how it saves her hours of housework and guards against dust and dampness. That's how he got ahead of those other fellows. Well, what are your plans, Junior? Well, I'm going to ask Wellington to ask his wife to tell the other theater managers about Johnson's wax. Hmm. Well, look. Yeah? Why don't you tell him about it? Well, doggone me. I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Gee, thanks, pal. I've still got time to call on all of them tonight. I'll see you later. That guy pulled my leg as often as I suspect him of pulling it. I'd be 19 feet tall. Oh, well. Uh, hey, sis, give me a chocolate bar. Oh, what kind, sis? Oh, give me a... Oh, Henry, I'm in a literary mood. <laughs> Will be five cents, sir. Uh, price is no object, sis. Um, let's see. Five cents, five. Uh oh, I bought the tickets for the last bit of change I had. Uh, hold the candy a minute, sis. I got to get some dough for my wife. I'll be right back. Well, hello there, McGee. Oh, Doc Gamble. Hi, Doc. What are you doing? Buying some candy to build up your strength so you can pull yourself out of your rocking chair that you've got wedged in on account of getting so pudgy with too much candy? <laughs> Don't give me that routine, Doc. Hey, where you been all summer? I haven't seen you around. Took my first rest and vacation in 30 years. Went hunting out in Wyoming. Ah, great country, Wyoming. I and Stein Hemingway used to go hunting around out there. Bob. You and who? I and Stein Hemingway. You know, Ernest Hemingway. Right, movies. Oh, yeah. Kid's got a great future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I always told him. Stein, I says, those movies you've been writing are pretty good. I says, that, that farewell to arms and for whom the bell tolls. But why don't you settle down and write a book? That's what I... <laughs> That's what I like about you, McGee. Always inspiring people to do things. Oh, well, sure. They'll do it sometime, too, and we'll find your body stuffed in a covert. <laughs> You've got a morbid sense of humor, Doc. I was out and out in Wyoming. Great, great. Never felt better in years. Dropped 15 pounds the first day out. Yeah? What'd you do? Lose your knapsack? <laughs> Doc, you got a nickel on you? I just discovered I didn't have any change. Sorry, my boy. All I have is some big bills. You're telling me. <laughs> well, I'll go back in and get some dough from Molly. Are you going in the theater? No, no. I just got a phone call. Got to rush across town and tell some darn fool that his daughter that he thinks is going to be a son won't be here for another week. Oh. See you later. So long, Doc. that candy bar for me, will you, sis? I'll be right back as soon as I get a nickel from my wife. Dad, rather to miss the newsreel. <laughs> now, let's see. Where was Molly? Uh, hey, hand me your purse, quick. <laughs> oh, what the... Oh, my gosh, I'm in the wrong aisle. Oh, first snap your... Why not?
wish that phone would stop ringing. It, it makes my nervous. Well, anyway, the crowd seems to have quieted down. Answer it, Molly. Tell them they got the wrong number. That wouldn't help. They'd just try again. Uh, Palace Theater, Molly McGee speaking. Who? Just a moment. McGee, do you know anybody named Bottlenose Gilroy? <laughs> Bottlenose Gilroy? Why, sure. He's the stagehand I know that works here. Well, he says you can unlock the door now. The mob is under control. The manager wants to come in. Oh, swell. Tell Bottlenose okay. Hello, Mr. Bottlenose. Uh, thank you very much. We'll open the door. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, hi, Wellington, old man. Sure, I'm glad to see you. Oh, is everything under control? Yeah. My, my. Of course, madam, everything is under control. Any theater manager who is unversed in mob psychology is unworthy of his salt, which is an old expression derived from ancient times when salt was an extremely valuable Kamar, did he? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I caused such a disturbance in your flicker tent, Wellington, but it was strictly inadvertible. Hmm? What happened was I mistook some old grab bag for Molly in the dark and asked her for her purse. And she yipped like a banshee and the battle was on. <laughs> a significant demonstration of war nerves, my dear fellow. It is an apt illustration, if I may say so. <laughs> may I say so? <laughs> well, indeed you may. Thank you. It is an apt illustration of a current wave of irresponsible hoodlum-ism. <laughs> we of the theater are deeply perturbed at the unmanly conduct of some of our, shall we say, patrons... <laughs> he left. Uh, patron. <laughs> Speaking for the community as a whole, and this community is one of the worst holes I've ever... Uh, <laughs> practically beside the point, I shall continue. What I mean to say is something must be done to combat this epidemic of hoodlum -ism. <laughs> Otherwise, and I say that advisedly, Otherwise, many responsible executives, of whom, of which, of whom, and I am one of them, <laughs> might be forced to seek other means of livelihood. I see. You mean if you can't control your customers, you're liable to get fired, huh? Admirably, if somewhat brutally put, madam. And now, if I may quote almost any radio announcer, and now, charming as this has all been, I must ask you to relinquish possession of my sanctorum, sanctum, sanctor. Hmm. <laughs> okay, bud, okay. Furthermore, we'll let you have your office back. <laughs> Thanks for the use of the bomb shelter. That's all right. Excuse me very much. A moment. Mm, hello. Yes? I want purple umbrella? I shall have to use it. The usher look for it. <laughs> Don't mention it, madam. Goodbye. Somebody lose something? Someone is always losing something in the theater, madam. Oh. We find so many lost articles that, as I often say, that is, <laughs> quite often, uh, at closing time, my office closely resembles the city dump. <laughs> And now... Okay, okay, we're going, bud. Thanks for everything, and don't apologize for us being so badly scared in your theater. Uh -huh. Just slip us a couple of passes sometime. That'll square it. <laughs> You're sweet. Good night. Oh, my. Shall we go home again? Oh, I want to see the rest of the show. Come on, let's go. the newsreel again. <laughs> Let's go home. Fine, we can come back next week. Yeah, what's the next feature? Heaven can wait for two weeks. <laughs> they say it's a very good day. Hey, Molly. Molly, look. There's Latrivia. Well, heavenly days. Hello, Mr. Latrivia. Hello, Molly. Hello, McGee. Nice to see you. Well, how's everything in the Coastal Guard, Latrivia? What are you doing in town? Sailing the bounding Main Street? No. No, I came to see Mr. Wellington, the manager of the theater. Do you know him? Oh, quite well. Yeah, I went to school with him, Latrivia. He and I slept in the same geometry class. Pal of yours? Oh, no, no. I'm seeing him on business for the Coast Guard. At every performance next week, we're putting on a recruiting talk. You need more men? We need more women. That's a kind of a chronic complaint with sailors, ain't it, Latrivia? This is a recruiting campaign for the spas, McGee. Oh. That's the women's division of the Coast Guard. And a wonderful organization for women between 20 and 36 who really want to do something in this war. 
I have a selfish interest, I'll admit, because every woman who joins relieves a man for frontline duty. Mm, I know how you must feel, Mr. Latrivia. Where do the spars train? At the Biltmore Hotel in Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, Ooh, gee, Anna. Must be wonderful to stay at a swell hotel like that and pay off in salutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how much jewelry are those spars allowed to wear, Latrivia? Well, I don't know. Just the essential minimum, I suppose. Why? Oh, just wondered if they were allowed to wear clanking bracelets and stuff. You don't want spars that jingle, jangle, jingle. <laughs> Don't you get it, kids? Uh, the joke lies in the similarity of sound between spar and spur. And... Ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> really? I thought it rather amusing. <laughs> Say, uh, what do spars do in the Coast Guard, Mr. Latrivia? Well, they act as chauffeurs, cooks, stewards, bookkeepers, teletype and telephone operators, and a hundred other things. Almost everything but actually manning the boat. You're going to be in conference very long. Maybe you could come home with us and have a cup of coffee. Well, thank you very much. But some other time, Mrs. McGee. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night, McGee. McGee, Coast Guard Militrivia said good night. Huh? Oh, 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 excuse me. I was thinking. About what? Women being sailors. Must be strange to have a sweetheart with a mustache in every port. <laughs> well, well, times do change. Now, good night, Latrivia. See you soon, I hope. Yes. Yeah. We've had enough excitement for one evening. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, pardon me, sir. Do you still want this candy bar? Uh, oh. <laughs> All right, sis. There, I do with that. Uh, give me a nickel, Molly. Sorry, dear, I can't. Why not? I forgot to tell you, but during the confusion, somebody snatched my purse. Somebody snatched my purse. Oh, sure. If this were a quiz show, I might be asking you this question. What do children and dogs and delivery boys have in common? And if I told you it had something to do with your kitchen floor, I'm sure you'd have the answer right away. Sure, they all track in dirt and rain and snow onto that floor, and you're the little woman who has to clean it up. Of course, if your floor is protected with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, you just relax and say, oh, what's the difference? Because you know that a damp cloth will wipe up those tracks and that dirt in a jiffy. And the linoleum itself will not be harmed because the glow coat keeps it safe. Yes, it saves in two ways. Saves you work and saves your linoleum. The regular use of glow coat makes linoleum last six to ten times longer. And you know, of course, that Johnson's glow coat is self-polishing. It needs no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. Glow coat keeps linoleum colors fresh and bright, and that's a good point, too. Wherever you have linoleum floors, in the kitchen or the bathroom or the front entrance, it will pay you to protect them with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to be back with you again for another season, and we're very happy to announce that we'll have with us this year that live wire with the dead pan, our old friend and yours, Ransom Sherman. Yes, and we're looking forward to the next 38 weeks. How many, Molly? 38. Only 38 shows to go. <laughs> My gosh, how the time flies. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night.